What if I told you that recently scientists made a discovery that's so surprising and so powerful? Not only are we about to know much, much more about how all these diseases work, Alzheimer's and asthma and arthritis and cancer and HIV and all the others, there's a chance, it's a real chance, that we can treat many of these diseases much more effectively, all because of this one discovery called RNA. Ah, I was a little I at the end, which I'll explain later. You don't hear much about it, but RNAi is a really big deal. And the curious thing about it is the discovery of RNAi was an accident, it was a puzzle, that appeared in a petunia. It was a purple petunia. But to fully appreciate this tale, let's back up a bit. Every creature, and you know this from high school, is made from a recipe that comes from its DNA, spelled out in chemicals A's and C's and T's and G's, inside the famous double helix. Every creature has its own DNA, different for mice, and then for whales, and for flowers, but to go from a chemical recipe, A's, G's, and T's, to a real creature that squeaks, or soars through the air, or turns gloriously pink, That requires RNA. RNA is the thing that turns you from a chemical code to a real, pulsing, living creature. RNA builds life. That's big. So big that to RNA researchers like Greg Hannon, RNA is more important than DNA. DNA really works for RNA, and proteins really work for (laughs) RNA. Would you get an argument, by the way, from somebody else? Oh, undoubtedly, sure. (laughs) So how do you get from DNA to become a real creature? Well, let's take one of those fantastic voyages and we'll show you. We're going to find DNA and we'll we'll make it a typical cell. So we're going to have to fly in and then go off to the nucleus of the cell, which will make a beautiful castle, the headquarters. And there's the DNA, the master code inside the nucleus. DNA, says Greg, never leaves the nucleus. You ever meet one of those mean librarians, you know, the yes. special reserve section? The ones that go, pow! Right, you can take the thing, you can copy it, but you can't take the book, because somebody else might need it. So if DNA is locked in the nucleus, how do we get the information out to build our creature? Well, that's what RNA does. That scribe, copying recipes out of the cookbook and throwing them out the window, out to the cytoplasm C that makes up most of the cell, all those recipes floating through the air, they are RNA. And to finish up in that sea, you see hundreds of thousands as well. We've made them into little guys with chef hats. Those would be ribosomes. And in your world, there are chefs who are using the recipes that that are written in the RNA. And whenever a recipe lands on a chef, whatever it is, he cooks it. Whatever it is, he cooks it. And each recipe is for a protein. Proteins build cells, bone cells, brain cells, all cells. So all these chefs are basically building you. You are made of proteins. And because of RNA, we can copy, we can distribute, and we can cook up you and me. And RNA has been doing this for more than three billion years. But there was something spectacular about RNA that nobody knew till just a few years ago. And they learned about it, as we told you, by accident. Here's a good one. Maybe this. In 1986, geneticist Rich Jorgensen was working at a biotech startup company in California. He was asked to create a spectacularly dazzling flower. That looks good. To attract investors. So that we could convince venture capitalists, investors, to give us more of the green stuff, more money. Still, back in 1986, geneticists didn't know how to work that easily with, say, roses. And so... We began with a simple plant, regular garden variety petunias. Petunias being a plant that were easy to introduce genes to in 1986. And so they decided to create a very, very, very purple petunia. Rich knew which gene produced purple. He knew how to sneak an extra copy of that gene into the plant's DNA, the master text, to be copied by that monk-like scribe. It will be transcribed by the monk the same as any other gene. And he'll throw the transcript out the window into the cytoplasm where the chef will be able to pick it up and use it. Rich thought that if he added more purple recipes, he'd get a purpler petunia. So he did it, and he waited. And what happened? We produced instead 
white flowers. White flowers? Complete opposite of what we had expected. Completely white flowers. We lost pigmentation completely. Our initial reaction was that something must have been wrong with the gene that we had engineered to introduce to the plant. A mistake? A mistake. So we checked everything out, and there were no mistakes that we could find. So why didn't the petunias turn purple? What happened? The petunia was a big puzzle. Nobody understood why when you add an extra gene for purple, you should not get more purple, but less purple. It took a decade of brilliant scientists working on petunias and fruit flies and worms and other organisms to finally work out what was going on. And what was going on is, quite by accident, Rich had discovered a secret inside living cells. Cells from time immemorial have had a mortal enemy called the virus. So let's imagine that the virus is a pirate ship. It lands. It then sends invaders inside the cell to shower recipes down to those cooks. But some of those recipes, you'll notice, look a little different. And what's in these recipes is not good for the cell. No, it's decidedly not good for the cell because the sole purpose of that virus is to make additional copies of itself and to the point that the entire cell is filled up with this. And the cell explodes, releasing these viruses to go and then infect whatever other cells they can find. So the theory is that long ago, cells developed a secret defense system which we will call the COP. What the COP does is when viruses invade and create showers of murderous recipes, the COP looks and thinks, hmm, some of these have a very fishy shape. It's a chemical difference which comes down to some of the viral recipes are two pages instead of one, and one side is a mirror image of the other. But the point is, to the COP, there's something not right about this shape. So when they see it in that shape... They say, virus. They, they go, say, uh-oh. uh-oh. And the cop <laughs> destroys the recipe. And when you say it destroys, is this... A, should we think like a kung fu kind of thing? Is it like, hi, <laughs> sort of deal? Yeah, a little enzymatically, a little thermodynamics. Uh, enzymatically? Like Enzymatic kung fu, maybe, yeah. <laughs> The cop destroys not only the oddly shaped version, whenever he 